All right, welcome to the Ravit Show. We are here at AWS reInvent, and I'm with Sam from Click. Uh, Sam, welcome to the Ravit Show. Hey, Ravit, great to be here with you. Thanks. I'm super excited to chat about various things. I know you were at the keynote as well. We're going to talk about AI implementation, data quality, data implementation. Um, but just to start with, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Tell us more about what you sure. do at Click. Sure. Yeah. So I'm Sam Pearson. I'm the senior vice president of engineering within the data business unit. Right. Uh, I joined Click. A couple, couple years ago here as uh, Click Acquired Talent, where I was the Chief Technology Officer, and now um, you know we're overseeing the products, building yep. out the data side of the portfolio, uh, and it's been a great journey so far. Great, you know, great team, great set of products to work with, yep. and uh, love, you know, love talking with the users and uh, you know helping them along their way. So and it's we've, fantastic. We've seen that journey as well from Talent to Click Talent, and we've loved it. To be honest, I've obviously personally followed Talent back then and uh, it has been amazing. Uh, yeah. So, well done on that. Uh, quickly also wanting to learn a little about the keynote. Um, you just attended the keynote and there were some amazing um, announcements made. I would love to know a little about the key takeaways and uh, also a little about you know the, how do you see the future in 2025? Yeah, I think, so one of the biggest things that, you know, that we're seeing is this, the uptake of Iceberg. So, you know, within Studio, within Talent Studio, Right. We offered, uh, we started rolling out support for Iceberg this summer. We've got a couple of phases of that. Uh, it's something that we're supporting in Click Talent Cloud as an option for the data engineer to be able to right. use. And now I think with, with AWS being able to put those things into the S3 buckets and those tables, I think that this is, um, you know, this is just yet another big thing that's kind of coming along. So it's not, you know, it's not like it's one vendor, it's not one standard, it's not all these different competitions. It's yep. something that everybody seems to be getting behind, which I think is fantastic and it's really good for the users. Yep. And it's good, it's something that I think will also help just give our users and give all the users just more flexibility of choice. And I think that that's a great, you know, interoperability and portability is just a great thing. Yeah. Uh, that, that our users are going to be able to enjoy now. That's that's actually very cool, right? In terms of, you know, it kind of gives a lot of flexibility to those enterprise leaders because that's one of the challenges that they were facing. Uh, so that's that's a very good announcement and we're kind of looking at, you know, uh, click talent to, you know, obviously see how uh, the open architecture looks like. Uh, also quickly wanting to learn a little about, you know, the high data quality, uh, which is like the backbone of a successful AI implementation. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think, look, I think, um, you know, the last couple of years we've seen such a, you know, such an advancement in, you know, specifically like the Gen AI, the LLMs, um, and, you know, they've been trained on open data. You know, mm. they tra get trained on the internet, they get trained on transcripts, and, you know, the, I think just number one, the uptake and the initiative that companies are taking now to be able to adopt this. I think if you compare it to things like, you know, the, the MapReduce boom, uh, uh, the Hadoop booms from yep. like way back when, you know, you really had to have a lot of specialty uh, in terms of your, in terms of the talent that you would have to bring in. Yep. And now it's just like, it's so much more accessible. So, you know, everybody is trying to do this, but the thing is, is like for every enterprise, you really need like that, you really need to be able to have your enterprise data ready right. for AI and to be able to do that securely, to be able to do it with high quality. And so that's one of the things that, you know, we've spent a lot of time talking to our customer base about. And, you know, even with ClickTown Cloud being a, you know, a more general purpose data engineering platform, mm. we've been able to add this in. So now, you know, our users are going to be able to use, uh, be able to use the, the same pipelines to be able to do the embeddings into vector databases, be able to add a, you know, a chat interface on top of that, yeah. going to be able to publish that data to click answers. So um, I think just the general framework of what we've got mm. is very modular and it allows us to be able to quickly adopt those things and get yeah. them in the hands of our users faster than ever before. Yeah, I love it. And those are fantastic insights, Sam. So thanks for sharing that. I'm kind of also curious to learn a little about, you know, when we talk about implementation, when we talk about, you know, uh, adopting AI as well, there are enterprise leaders who also kind of start thinking about so many challenges, right? So how do you see those challenges? But, uh, you know, how do you also kind of solve those types of uh, problems is something I'm kind of curious to learn. Yeah, well, I mean, it kind of goes back to the architecture of ClickTalent Cloud in the right. first place. So, you know, there's really three pillars. There's a the connectivity piece, there's the transformations, right. and then there's the data trust and our data products catalog, right? So when it comes to the, the connectivity part, you know, really being able to connect to anything, 
any SAS data source, any mainframe, any database. Very important. You know, like, and we, again, we're able to add those things very quickly, right? Yeah. And so, you don't have to have like, you know, cobble together like this distributed system, lots of different tools, um, you know, lots of different tools that, you know, otherwise, like all of a sudden now you got to have everybody trained on, you know, all these different things. Yeah. Um, so I think that's one thing that's really important. I think the I think the second thing is just the transformations. Mm. Again, it's a it's a skill set issue. You know, SQL has become you know very popular. So that's we offer support for SQL, uh, which is great. Um, but also getting into the no code and the low code experiences. So we you know we've rolled out a Copilot experience that helps users develop SQL on top of the data pipelines. And of course, you can always go to the talent, uh, you know, no code experience, which yep. is sort of more drag and drop. Build those data pipelines, and then those also integrate into Click Talent Cloud. I think so. those are, those are good, you know, solution out there for the enterprise leaders out there. So thanks for that, uh, uh, you know, sharing that. Also, wanting to learn more about, you know, I have many questions. Sorry, yeah. no, that's great. <laughs> I love it. Keep them coming. Yeah. So what are the benefits of supporting architectures like data lakes and cloud data warehouses? What do you think about that? Yeah. No, I mean, look, I think um, I think there are so many different patterns that have emerged over the years, right? Uh, you know, everything used to be in one database and then it was like distributed databases, you had Hive, you had, uh, you know, like, you know, things were, you know, apart, and then they kind of came back together, with, right. especially with things like Snowflake and Databricks, which is fantastic. I think the biggest thing is to be able to give users the choice, mm. right? Like, what's the right tool for the job that you're trying to do? And again, not needing to have like multiple different solutions in place, not needing to get trained up on all these different technologies. You know, it's really like these are plug and play, they're options cool. inside of your pipeline. Yeah. And I think that's where, you know, we've really been able to shine. You know, and maybe, it, you know, again, you get have, you have Studio, which is something that's more, you know, uh, ETL, and then within our you know, pipeline product, you know, you've got ELT, mm. you can do the ETLT, lots of different options. Yeah. And again, it's just up to everybody you know, our users, what's what's the right thing for them in, in their particular situation. What I'm kind of also hearing is about keeping it as simple as possible for the enterprise leaders because there are multiple tools and that has been one of the challenges for the enterprise leaders as well, that they've bought so many tools yeah. and maybe, you know, 20 or 30% of the tools, they're not even using it, right? Yeah. So yeah. that becomes like a challenge for uh, the enterprise leaders as well, rather giving them that option and giving them that flexibility of what they want to use yeah. and the plug and play it becomes like an easy yeah. job. Right? I think, I mean, just building off of that, I mean, I think you also have, you know, last few years you've had things like the modern data stack and you have sure. lots of different, you know, it's sort of this fragmented thing. And again, it's like, that's that can be the right answer for some customers, but, you know, the more people that we've talked to, you know, they're kind of like, hey, all of a sudden this thing is really, it's gotten too distributed, it, it's gotten too fragmented, we don't really have a great way of governing it, and uh, so that's something that we've seen as we've you know started to get into different deals now too. Yeah, no, I think those are fantastic insights, thanks for sharing that. Uh, one last question for our audience. Sure. Um, uh, but before that I ask, because I, because we are just all around, uh, you know, around the corner for 2025, I'm kind of wanting to learn a little about any Key trends that you're gonna, you are excited about, or uh, that you predict for 2025? Yeah. Look, I think um, you know we already talked about iceberg. Iceberg. You know, iceberg is one uh, that I think is gonna get even bigger. You know, we already talked about that. Uh, I think Gen AI is gonna continue to evolve. Right. But one of the things that we're we're taking a really close look at is more of the the agentic architectures. Right. Right. And having agents um, more autonomously being able to make decisions. Um, this is something that even in the products that we're building, you know, we're putting agents into the product, having those scoped for very specific jobs, and then having those architected by, you know, a, a more of like an orchestrator. So, you know, I think I think you're going to see a lot of those. And again, those are all going to present unique and difficult data challenges for the users and the, yeah. and the data engineers who are trying to put these things together. But again, I think, you know, I'm really happy with where we are. Yeah. You know, we're going to be able to add support for these things, I think, very quickly. Yeah, so, exactly. You know, you know, it's, so that's it's a good an exciting news. thing. Yeah, exciting, yeah. for sure. Uh, so the last question is all about people wanting to reach out to you. So if they want to do that, which is the best place, where can they learn about uh, you know the different things that you're building. But yeah. Not only just that, is LinkedIn a best place? Twitter a best place? Where can they connect with you? And yeah, totally. You? So click.com. 
yeah. uh, is always the best place, you know, QLIK.com, yep. you know, and, and getting there. I would say we're, we're constantly putting on different webinars and doing a lot of, um, and doing a lot of outreach. Yep. And so I would definitely say like, you know, look up look up the webinar uh, program. Get yep. on the mailing list. Those type of things. Those are you know those are going to be the best ways for you to stay up to date on what we're trying to do over here. Thanks, Sam. Such a pleasure chatting with you on the Robert Show. It was uh, amazing to hear all the great insights. Thank yeah. you. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you yeah, very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone.